we continue to talk about combinatorics, and now I want to talk about um, the group of permutations. So this uh, story will be a little bit more abstract, maybe, but uh, you can think of it as a, a little introduction to what you will study in algebra, um, especially algebra one course, um, if you are uh, studying in the University of Chicago. So uh, the group of permutations. And I want to remind you of the following basic uh, and very important uh, concept of composing maps. So let's suppose that we have um, three sets, A, B, and C, and we have two maps. There is a certain map from A to B, and there is a certain map to, from B to C, which is G. So um, the composition, so this is a definition. So, uh, uh, so we have a map A to B, which is called F, and B to C, which is called G. So uh, composition uh, and then there is a severe ordering G composed with F uh, is a map, uh, uh, let me call it H, H from A to C. Uh, such that if I take uh, H and apply it to any element A in A, then what I do, I first apply F and then apply G. And this is why the notation goes in this way. So though G seems to be the second one and F the first one, I multiply them first writing G then F, and, and this is uh, because uh, I first apply F to something and then to G. So this is a definition of, of, uh, of a composition. And uh, um, a little exercise is that uh, composition of bijections um, is a bijection. I'm not going to check it, probably you know it, but if not, just there is a simple elementary set theory proof of that. So um, uh, now if we just uh, imagine we have a certain set, say 1 to 3, and another copy of it, 1 to 3, and another copy of it, 1 to 3, then what happens is that I can compose uh, bijections, for instance, these two permutations, and get a new one. So uh, let me just rewrite it. So for instance, I take a permutation which exchanges one and two, this one. And uh, uh, I take another, so this is uh, my sigma uh, permutation, and then there is a tau permutation which is sending one to one, two to three, three to two. And I can compose them. So in my picture, I first uh, apply sigma to element and then tau, and so it will be tau composed with sigma. So for permutations, we just try to multiply instead of that. And that's a new permutation, and I can easily see what it does. So we just look where each element goes, kind of straight. One goes to two, then to three, so one goes to three. Two goes to one, to one, so go two goes to one. And three goes to three goes to two, so three goes to two. And that's a new permutation. So, uh, of course, we have to get a new permutation of the same set because composition of bijections is a bijection. That's why. Uh, so, uh, we constructed um, a map from Sn uh, times Sn is a set, so pairs of elements in Sn, two pairs of permutations, to Sn, which takes the permutation sigma and permutation tau, and sends a pair sigma tau to the permutation, first apply sigma, then apply tau. So that's uh, what's called a product of permutations, and I denote it by sigma 
times tau. So that's what's called product of permutations. Of permutations. Um, so, okay, interesting things can happen. For instance, I can actually apply, take one permutation and apply it many, many times. And that's completely obvious because if I have a permutation, why don't I just repeat doing the same permutation many times? This will be called the power of a permutation. So, uh, uh, let me give you an example. So, example... Mm, So let me take a permutation, something complicated. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes to 3, uh, 5, 2, 4, 1. And let's suppose I want to apply it 100 times. So I multiply this sigma 100 times on itself. And of course, it looks crazy complicated because just if I just keep doing it one after another, um, that's very hard to compute what I get. But if I draw it in one of the ways which I explained to you, so I can just say that one goes to three, three goes to one, one goes, uh, sorry, one goes to three, three goes to one, and um, uh, two goes to five, uh, five goes to four, 4 goes to 2, and when I apply permutation several times, uh, you know, I can just follow each element like where it goes. So after applying my sigma 100 times to 1, so at first 1 will stay uh, where it stands, after I apply sigma once, it goes to 3, sigma again it goes to 1, 3, and so on, so depending on whether I apply sigma even or odd number of times, I will get either 1 out of 1 or 3, and since 100 is even, I get that 1 goes to 1, 3 goes to 3. And if I apply sigma 100 to 2, so again, every time I apply sigma, uh, each element here moves to the next position according to the cycle, and if I apply it 3 times, it returns back. So since 100 gives remainder of 1 when I get divide by 3, uh, uh, um, actually after applying it 100 times, it's the same as if I apply it just once. So 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, uh, and sorry, 5 goes to 5, and 4 goes to uh, 2, uh, sorry, um, what I'm saying, 2 goes to 5, uh, 5 goes to 4, and 4 goes to 2. And so my permutation in power 100 can be easily computed, and it equals to uh, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 5, 3 goes to 3, 4 goes to 2, 5 goes to 4. So that's what a uh, product of permutation looks like, and this is what is the power of a permutation. Okay, so um, there is some cheating going on here, because let me take a permutation sigma in Sn, and let me just compute sigma 4. So that's sigma times sigma times sigma times sigma, but if you think a little bit about that, actually um, I know what is a composition of two maps, but what does it mean to multiply them, them uh, several times? So, of course, I might assume that actually first I do this two, and then I do this two, and then I do uh, uh, apply the last one. This is clear what it means. But, uh, frankly speaking, I might do something else. For instance, I can take sigma composed with sigma, uh, sigma composed with sigma, and then compose them. And is it the same thing or not? So, um, it is indeed the same thing, and uh, the reason is that bracketing order does not matter when you multiply permutations, and the property kind of behind that is what's called associativity. So, multiplication of permutations, permutations is associative. And what it means, it means that for any three permutations, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 in Sn, uh, sigma 1 composed with sigma 2 
composed with sigma 3 equals sigma 1, composed with sigma 2, composed with sigma 3. And that's then one can check that actually this equals to this, uh, uh, because you can sort of first switch brackets here, and then switch bigger brackets, and then switch again and again, and, and in a couple of steps you will actually move from this uh, uh, expression to this one. So, um, uh, this is of course very simple to check, because you can, um, just to check that this is the case, you can take for instance uh, the left-hand side applied to certain element, and this will be sigma 3 applied to n, and after you open everything up, you will see that this is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 applied to n, so both of them is sort of sigma 1 applied to sigma 2 applied to sigma 3 applied to something. And that's what both of the things look like, so they are actually equal. Um, but uh, moreover, if you just have any three maps between three sets ABC, uh, if you do the first composition and the second and the third, then you can move brackets. So that's just a general property of composition of maps of any sort. Okay, so, uh, so this is one property which permutations have. And again, so you kind of already here can see something interesting, because if you, for instance, take S2, so S2 has two permutations inside, as I said, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 2, 1. And if I denote this one by E and this one by X, I know that every time I compose anything, I should get an element here. And so I can write down a kind of a multiplication table. So if I multiply E plus E, so, so I multiply what is here on what is here, or maybe vice versa, I get E, X, x, when I apply x twice, I get uh, again e. If I permute two elements and then backwards, then, then I get uh, uh, the same thing as not moving anything. So if I take s3, for instance, I will see here a huge uh, table with six permutations uh, uh, here, six permutations here, and here I will see 36 kind of answers to what happens when I multiply different permutations. So this is called multiplication table, and that's pretty interesting structure on its own. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But what I'm saying is that this way to multiply permutations tells us a lot about um, like how permutations are structured. So um, what else? So another important fact about permutations is there, that there is a one very special bijection from a set to itself. So let's suppose that A is a set. So then, uh, identity of A is a map from A to A, that's, that's a certain function, a map defined by rule, by formula identity of A of any element x equals to x. So that's the one which does not do anything. So this map will look like, if I have a couple of elements in a set, it sends each element to itself. If your set is finite, you get a permutation. So, uh, so this identity uh, in our set n of n elements is a permutation which looks like 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, n goes to n. And this is a certain special permutation in Sn. So um, let me denote it by E and you'll see later why that the same is here. So it has a property that for any permutation sigma in Sn, sigma composed with E is the same as E composed with sigma, or times sigma, and it's the same as sigma. So if I have this permutation which does not do anything, if I apply it after or before any other permutation, nothing will change. So uh, that's something which will be called uh, maybe a trivial permutation or identity permutation. So that's kind of a trivial permutation. And you might wonder why I even mentioned that, but, uh, but that's kind of important. So in every set of permutations, as n, there exists a special permutation which does not do anything. Um, okay. And in particular, if you look at, if you write it the first one, then in the first row and in the first column, you will just see the same permutations written uh, uh, in, uh, like, 
because when you multiply identity with anything, you will get the, this permutation back. So you kind of know a row and a column of the table, uh, multiplication table for any set of permutations. So finally, I want to talk about last kind of idea related to composing permutations or different maps. And this is an idea of an inverse. So uh, let me just give a general definition. So let's suppose that f from a to b is a map, the map, and then g from b to a is an inverse of f of f. So we denoted by saying that g equals to f kind of power minus one. That's just a notation. If so you now have two maps, you can compose them. If you take first f and then g, so uh, that means we apply first g and then f, and this maps b to b, and this has to be identity of b, so it's a map which sends every element of b to itself, and uh, g composed f should be identity of a. So example is something like this. So we have an L, uh, we have maybe a, um, a map which, which does something like this. And we want to compute its inverse, so this is f. And g is just the map from, from, from this is a, this is b. And g should be the map from, from b to a. And what it does, it just kind of reverses all the arrows. And this g does not always exist, but uh, sometimes it exists. And actually it exists if and only if f um, is a bijection. So maybe it's a little exercise. Uh, so f from a to b and f inverse exists uh, if and only if f is a bijection. So for a bijection there is an inverse, and, and that's if and only if. That's again something you might know very well, but uh, uh, but that's um, uh, that's an exercise. So why it's very important? Uh, so in many cases in mathematics or uh, just in life in general, you want to prove that there exists a bijection between two sets because you want to prove that two sets have the same number of elements. And uh, usually it is easy to construct a certain way to identify them. Uh, but then checking that uh, f is injective and surjective might be a little tough. And in many cases, instead, it's much easier to construct the rule going backwards and to show that the rule f and the rule g are uh, mutually inverse. And, uh, uh, and so checking these two properties might be easier. And conceptually, that looks more uh, satisfying because you kind of have a way to say for each element of A, which element of B to take, and backwards. So uh, we will prove a lot of uh, theorems about equality of numbers and combinatorics via this kind of uh, formalism. OK, so for every permutation, we now have an inverse. And let's summarize all of that. So first, I will give a couple of examples of inverses of the permutations. And then I will define for you a structure of a group. And permutations form a group. So that's exactly uh, kind of the abstraction of all the properties we just discussed. OK, so let's compute an example. So since permutations are bijections, for every permutation, we have an inverse. So let's take, for instance, permutation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, going to 3, 4, 1, 2, 5. And that's sigma in S5. And then what is sigma inverse? So that's really easy to see because I, I can just, you know, flip it. Because I know 1 goes 3 for the inverse, 3 should go to 1. So 3 goes to 1, 4 goes to 2, 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 5 goes to 5. And then I can rewrite it. So, uh, of course, that's a very non-standard way to write down a permutation because I want to start with where 1 goes, and 1 goes to 3. And then 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 1, 4 goes to 2, 5 goes to 5. So that's an inverse. OK, every permutation has an inverse. So let me summarize all of the properties of uh, permutations uh, in, uh, in a more general way. So, definition. So, a set 
G. This is just some set with a map from G to G to G. So for two elements in G, I can multiply them, whatever that means. G1, G2 goes to G1 times G2. It's called a group. If so, a couple of properties should hold. So something holds, forms a group if if something something is true. So first is that uh, for any elements g1, g2, g3, and g. So for three something, for instance permutations later on, g1 composed with g2 composed with g3 is equal to g1, g2, g3. That's called associativity. So secondly, there exists a special element E in G, which is the lazy one, doesn't do anything, such that G composed with E is E composed with G is G. Uh, sorry, such that for any element G in G, when you compose it with, with E or multiply with E, you get, you get G back. So composition, multiplication are the words meaning the same here. This is this map. And three, for every element g in g, there exists the inverse g prime in g, such that g g prime is g prime g is uh, identity. And people denote this g prime by g inverse and say that that's inverse. And there are lots of examples. So, uh, of course, our example, which is kind of an interesting one for today, is Sn is a group. And the reason is that we can multiply permutations and we just checked all three properties. So that's, that's an example. Uh, but there are other examples. For instance, of course, I mean, I said operations, the easiest thing is to take integers and take addition. And then we have a map sending uh, um, a, b uh, to a plus b, and of course it satisfies um, a plus b plus c equals a plus b plus c. And of course there is this identity element, but this e is actually just zero. So this is integer number. And we know that 0, a plus 0 is, is 0 plus a is a. So adding it doesn't change anything. And finally, this uh, a inverse, kind of weirdly, we need an element which when you add it to something you get 0, so this is of course minus a. So uh, the third axiom is also satisfied. So z with addition is, is a group. So this is a group. Mm, and mm, for instance, um, if you take, say, z with multiplication, then 1 and 2 hold, uh, because you can take as easy identity, and also multiplication is a, b times c equals a times b, c is associative, but yeah, that's it. Um, uh, but, but 3 does not. Not. And the reason is because, I mean, trying to find this g prime is basically trying to solve uh, uh, equation ax equal to 1. So this is kind of, or maybe a, a prime equals to 1. And this a prime should be, uh, you should divide 1 by a and, and you cannot do it. So, so, uh, so two properties hold and the last does not. So these are all examples of groups. And uh, why I talk about permutations uh, uh, as a group? So firstly, as I explained already, this multiplication, inverses, and so on are very important. Though the structure of SN as a group is very important. But also group is kind of a unifying concept in mathematics. So we will see groups which are coming from geometry, uh, groups of symmetries of something, groups of symmetries of polytops, and groups of symmetry of the plane, and groups in hyperbolic uh, non-Euclidean geometry, and so on and so forth. 
And and um, the thing is that sometimes the same group appears in different places. So, for instance, this group S3 with permutations of three elements will appear as a group of symmetries of a triangle and appear once again later on. So these groups tend to appear a lot and they tend to unify mathematics. It's, it's one of the unifying concepts. So if the same group appears in different areas for different reasons, there are hidden connections between these areas. And we are going to discover some of those. So uh, next time uh, I'm going to talk about subsets of a set and uh, in particular about binomial coefficients.